Welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. Today I'm out with an FX Impact Mark III. This is a sub 12 foot pound version for non FAC users and it's also in 2.2 calibre. Please watch and keep with us. We're going to shoot some targets, shoot some steel, we're going to do all the chronographing with various pellet weights and we're also going to hopefully shoot some squirrels. This is the 480cc carbon fibre buddy bottle. The power adjuster is operable here to increase or decrease power and it should only be operated when the rifle is decocked. The left side Picatinny rail here is a great position for an illuminator for added night vision. The cocking lever can be swapped for left handers onto this side of the action. The rifle is supplied with a moderator to minimise firing noise but any half inch by 20 moderator can also be fitted. Things like the Donny FL I've been using on some of the other FX rifles will decrease the noise even more. Filling is using the supplied Foster adapter and there is an extended cap supplied with the Sabre Tactical rail. The standard cap is slightly shorter and the Sabre Tactical adds a little bit more to the depth there. Usual filling procedures and this one wants filling to 250 bar. This manometer here shows the bottle pressure so you can tell when the rifle's full. It's recommended this one's filled to 250 bar. Here's the primary regulator pressure which reduces initial power from the bottle itself. Secondary firing pressure is demonstrated on this manometer here on the underside which gives you the actual firing pressure required to send the pellet at 12 foot pounds. The magazine holds 28 rounds and to load it just click it open like that and you can turn it all the way round and pop one pellet in to lock it and then just go back and fill all the other slots until it's full with 28 pellets. Once it's full, put the cover back on, clip that back in place and it slots into the gun. But it's always worth making sure the first pellet is not protruding here otherwise it can get shaved off on the transfer port as it goes into the gun. To load the rifle, pull the cocking lever back and the magazine will slot into position like that. There's a latch here so when it comes to removal in reverse you just pop that latch back and it will slide out. Once it's locked in, cocking handle forwards and it's now loaded and ready to fire. The clear back plate on the rotary magazine allows you to easily see how many pellets remain before you need to reload. Each time you pull the cocking lever back, clicks into position and then all the way forward to latch it closed, ready to fire again. When the gun's cocked, the safety catch is there. Up for safe, forward for fire. You get an underslung AR-15 style grip for greater tactile comfort when shooting. In 2.2 calibre, the magazine holds 28 shots. Most other common option is the 177, which is a 38 shot magazine. Calibres available are 177, 22, 25, 30, and 35 calibre, but the larger ones are more appropriate in FAC format. The barrel is a smooth twist X superior liner and match grade. It's free floating and in this version is 500 millimetres long.
comes to me, I do prefer screw top lids. They make it a lot easier to get your pellets out. And they're also a bit more secure. So if you put your pellets down and they fall over or anything like that, you're less likely to spill them everywhere. These Acupels, being the physically lightest, are also the physically shortest. These Acupels, being the physically lightest, are also the physically shortest that I've reviewed in the rest of the FX22 rifles. They've generally been a very good performer. well worth noting I've not had any magazine failures through this procedure but I've used a lot of FX before and I know it's worthwhile keeping them clean and serviced and well attended too. It's easy to get spare magazines and if you do go for more than 28 pellets in a session well having twice that many is easy to have in your pocket. I like the fact that the cocking lever is very fast operating with just fingertip controls and it doesn't disturb your shooting position because you can stay very stable and especially when you're testing and setting up from the bench it means you're you know, consistent without changing position at all. I find it's very important to make sure the first pellet isn't protruding here because it does tend to get shaved off in the transfer port when you load it otherwise. I wouldn't normally do the ammunition testing on a rifle using a night vision scope or even in fact a daylight electronic scope but the PAR 008 suits the impact really really well and I enjoyed using it in all circumstances plus it lets me record everything for the better use of video footage. So these groups were all shot at 30 metres in real world conditions. I think this time yet again, I'm gonna go with the JSB standard weight here because the Diablo's at 15.89 grains seem to give me the most consistent results. Again, I'll just reiterate, I don't chase zero when I'm testing pellets. I just like to give them all a nice run through the barrel without changing as, changing as little as possible. Breaking weight on the two-stage trigger is 987 grams. This is adjustable and can be set up to your preferences following the instruction manual. The trigger offers extensive setup capabilities for different braking pressures 
and also the position for length of pull and reach to the throat of the grip. He can see adjustment on the butt pad for the vertical position to suit the shooting. And there are also grooves on the inside for your fingers here to grip it into your shoulder. Although the magazine stands out on the right side, it's still possible to shoot the rifle left-handed and the cocking lever can also be swapped to the left-hand side. This Sabre Tactical extended Picatinny rail underneath allows me to increase the stability of the rifle using a bipod like this Atlas version that clips on and off, quick release to the Picatinny rail. There's plenty of Picatinny rail for extensive scope mounting capabilities and other accessories like night vision or thermal imaging. This polymer cheek piece stops the rifle feeling quite so cold because your skin isn't in contact with the aluminium chassis itself. Overall length, including the moderator, is 34 inches or 865 millimetres. Length of pull is 14 inches or 357 millimetres. Overall weight is 3.1 kilograms or 6.85 pounds. Shot capacity is up to 330 shots from the 250 bar fill. Although a greater shot capacity is promised, I found myself topping up the air bottle every 280 shots, which is 10 magazine refills, and found no variation and complete reliability when I was in hunting scenarios. The rear macro power wheel is a 16 step power wheel that adjusts the strength of the hammer in increments of 5 to 15 feet per second, depending on the calibre and regulator pressure. The sub-12 foot-pound version doesn't have the 72cc power plenum, but larger FAC versions have this, as well as more adjustability from the dual AMP regulators, which are externally adjustable. The double regulator system really proves its value, with a flat power curve throughout the pressure of the bottle. So you do get very long shot counts without any problems or change of zero at all. The quick tune system, which on the 12 foot pounds is slightly limited compared to the FAC versions, does give you those 16 power settings, but is anybody really going to go below 12 foot pounds? Perhaps maybe at six foot pounds for a, a halfway house in specific scenarios, but you do need to completely change zero for this, remember. I like the fact the upper Picatinny rail has 20 MOA inclination built in for greater long range potential. This is perhaps far more applicable on the FAC version shooting heavier slugs or the large calibre variants of the rifle, which of course share the overall same chassis build as this one. Cold or warm weather, the consistency of the trigger pulls was superb, enabling you to get a really positive tactile feel with your finger, straight to the blade, straight through the first stage and hold on the second stage for a crisp, clean break when you needed it. The compact ball pup layout makes the rifle very short and easy to handle in close confines. As more and more lead pellets passed through the barrel, the rifle became more and more consistent with better consistent accuracy. I also found that two or three more pellet styles worked better than the initial test stage. But I still stuck with the JSB 15.89 grain heavies.
bolt manipulation and stability of the rifle in the hunting scenario is excellent. The short, compact layout of the bullpup design makes it easy to handle in close confines, especially indoors. But around the farm, around foliage and everything like that, nothing's bumping into anything, nothing's dragging on branches or trees. And you can operate the gun fairly quietly without any kind of disturbance being applied to animals around you. I will say though, the extended Sabre tactical rail with a bipod did make it far more comfortable to shoot prone than I'm used to with the FX impact design. Here you can see I'm actually shooting the letters in the Caldwell logo for targets because now it really is thumping small cloverleaf groups. These are at 25 metres, which is close on 30 yards. The great joy of the impact system, which is not covered in this review of the Sub-12 model, is the fact you can change all the barrel capabilities, calibers, power options on the FAC versions, and it gives you huge amounts of versatility for hunting and target shooting at longer distance with an air rifle. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching that video. Please like, please subscribe, and please comment because your comments are what inspire us to make more videos. There's more details in the description below, but thank you for watching and bye for now.